There's been a lot of news recently around Jacob Reese Mogg, a Tory backbencher from North East Somerset. He's a, from what I can tell, he's a good man. I couldn't tell you a bad bone in his body. He just has personal beliefs that are a bit odd, like thinking that abortions are bad for people who have been raped or if they have disabilities or things like that. And he is he is very much an old star conservative. He thinks the state should have minimum power in people's lives. And he seems to be a great advocate of personal charity rather than government handouts, which I don't think is entirely bad, but obviously a lot of left-wing people will. But he's been in the news recently because of a scuffle, we'll call it, at Bristol University. And in this article, Bristol anti-fascists hail disruption of Jacob Rees-Mogg UWE event as complete success. We barged in, started chanting, and within a matter of minutes, a member of the audience became aggressive towards us. Now, this is already a narrative that is... It's already a victim narrative, basically, and it's basically a lie, as the video will show. So as you can probably see, the guy in the white shirt obviously didn't mean to be violent and just caught the young woman with his elbow. But in the article, the anti-fascist who disrupted Jacob Rees-Mogg's speech at an event at the University of West of England hailed it as a complete success. But the Bristol anti-fascist complained that their disruption was met by violence by fascists within the audience and pointed out that video of the episode showed that the first punch in the melee was thrown by one of Jacob Rees-Mogg's supporters against a woman in the audience. Uh, that's what anti, anti the Bristol anti-fascists are, compl- are claiming. I don't know if the guy actually is a supporter of Jacob Rees-Mogg. And he didn't throw a punch. He accidentally caught her in the face with his arm. I can't stand these victim narratives, really. A spokesman for the anti-fascists of Bristol said, UWE, a university that takes pride in its inclusivity of LGB stance, decided to allow a speech from Jacob Rees-Mogg to take place, a person whose homophobic and anti-abortion beliefs are well known and documented. Furthermore, not only has he downvoted bills that would help poor people and is in favour of privatising the welfare state, he has also documented to hang out at parties set up by the traditional Britain group, an Islamic phobic anti immigration group. They're also against liberalism, had a quick look. Following all these, as anti fascists, feminists, and people who partake in class struggle, we felt that it was appropriate for us to disrupt his speech. Well, you probably did, but you say it was a success, but it's just. It, it's actually given a victim narrative to Jacob Rees Mogg, which I'm sure isn't what you want. But John Peterson was saying this about his Channel 4 interview that Kathy Newman thought that she had won her interview against him. And he said that it was ideological blindness. Like, she only talked, she's basically in an echo chamber of people saying, oh, you made him look like an idiot. And that's probably exactly what they think. But they've actually done the opposite. And it's quite interesting to look into the mindset of them personally. But uh, that's pretty much the summation of this article, just... The anti-fascists think they won. They did absolutely nothing. (laughs) They came in, they had a bit of a shout, and they left. I wouldn't even call it a scuffle, I'd call it a bit of a knock. (laughs) And one of the anti-fascists got a bit violent, or tried to anyway, um, and then left. That was it, nothing happened. This was a non-issue, and they they think they've bashed Hitler himself. It's a bit weird, but... That's about the most that came out of this story. I just love the way Jacob Rees-Mogg just strides his way up to them. Tries to have a nice, friendly chat. If the guy in the white shirt didn't come up, there'd have been no violence. They they would have just said, oh, we won. Like, there was no resistance. People were on our side. They would have tried to turn it around in their favour somehow. But because of that guy in white accidentally knocking that girl, uh, that young woman, sorry, I think he... uh, 
I think he gave them the victim narrative they were looking for, unfortunately. But no bother, in my opinion. But speaking of the man in the white shirt, the Mail Online says, Man in white shirt who defended Jacob Rees-Mogg in the university bus stop is pictured in black Nazi uniform. <laughs> so in this extravagant news article by the Mail, Paul Townsley who was attending a debate involving Conservative MP, became involved in a scuffle with demonstrators and appeared to hit out at a woman. Shortly after the incident at Bristol University of West of England, a photograph emerged of Mr Townsley dressed in full Nazi regalia at a family do. This is somehow news. And the thing is, the picture they have of him in his Nazi uniform is clearly a fancy dress party because there's a woman in the background in a banana outfit the, uh, the, this isn't news why is this news so the article goes on to say that because of the photograph he's been getting harassment by what they call left wing activists and his wife told the times we are fed up with being intimidated and have called the police he dressed up in the SS uniform for a family do he is a good man and a lot of people would support that Mrs Townsley, 53, said her husband intervened as he feared for MPs' safety following the murder of Joe Cox at the hand of right-wing extremists in 2016. I wouldn't say that's unreasonable, but I don't want to... I don't, I don't really want to make false equivalents here. They were not as bad as the man who murdered Joe Cox. I don't care what you say. They were just there being LARPers. The man who killed Joe Cox was an actual murderer. There is no equivalent there, but I, I'm not saying it's unreasonable that he thought maybe the MP's life's in danger. So there we go. The Mail also give Mr. Towsley his side of the story. He said he was worried about Mr. Rees-Mogg's safety. I knew there was no security. And responding to allegations that he hit out a female protester, the martial arts expert said, I didn't hit anybody. She was too close and I put my hand up to protect myself. She wanted to be there. People will think what they want to think. I never hit anybody. She got so close that I could feel spittle in my face and I put my hand up to stop it. I think watching the video, that's perfectly reasonable explanation. I think, I, I don't think he can remember too well the situation because he didn't expect it, maybe. But I'm just speculating here. I think the point is that he didn't mean to hit her. And anyone who's saying he's a fascist trying to bash communists or whatever is just downright wrong i think this man's a bit of a layman when it comes to politics and he was he was just there with his son who studied politics so i'm happy to at least accept his side of the story there because i'll trust a irishman over an anti-fascist <laughs> but that's enough victim narrative for one day now on to the important things such as tories launch petition to protect free speech after hard left thugs brawl with reese mogg the Tories have launched a petition to protect free speech after Jeremy Corbyn supporting thugs wearing balaclavas attempted to stop J.P. Cabrice Mogg addressing students last week. It should be mentioned at this point that this article is from The Express, so it'll be a bit biased to say the least. Now with this being The Express, there isn't actually anything in the actual article about the petition from Tory MPs, so I'm just going to put it in the description because I think you should sign it. It's not too bad. But instead it has stories such as Miss Cobra who quit as council leader after a campaign of threats and intimidation by members of the far left group. She said that they were singing I'll Be Watching You, Words From Every Breath You Take, which is a song about stalking by the police, which isn't in any way a threat, is it? And then there's Labour MP Stella Creasy who confirmed she had been targeted by left wing thugs in the same way. Her revelations follow a group of hard left supporters of Mr. Corbyn break into a meeting at the University of West England in Bristol, where Reese Mogg was addressing students in what turned out to be a violent protest. Um, I'd say that's. I wouldn't say it's a violent protest, I'd say it's a protest turned violent, personally, but this is the Express, the hardly a reliable source, since they're not even talking about what they titled. And finally, they go into the Shadow Chancellor Macdonald has been accused of stirring up violence from his past speeches to the far-left activists. Now, I'm actually going to save that to last because it is quite an intimidating speech, so I'm 
just going to let that play at the end of this video, because I think it's really worth listening to. Moving from one stupid paper to another, we go over to The Independent, who have come out with a hit piece against Jacob Rees-Mogg. I can't imagine why. Beneath the mask, Jacob Rees-Mogg is a dangerous and deceitful bully on secondment from the 18th century. It's 20 years since he first tried to emulate his late father-in-law, Somerset de Chair, no really, by becoming a conservative MP, touring the council estates of Fife in the Bentley with a nanny in tow. Yet he's now the bookie's favourite for next PM. Now I, I, I just can't imagine why they're so scared. Was there ever a more exquisitely polite thug than Jacob Rees-Mogg? How can you possibly call him a thug? On indefinite secondment from the mid-18th century, the honourable member for the East India Company has finally offered a flash of the real Moggy behind the mask. Hidden until now beneath the Savile Row, three-piece and floridy courteous facade, lie a deceitful bully with a taste for attacking those more honest than himself. I'm sorry if I pronounced most of those words wrong, I am a bit of a commoner. Moggy favoured the Trumpian path, as previously colonised by Boris Johnson over the mythical £350 million per week for the NHS. After the lie had been rigorously debunked, he aggressively doubled down on it. That's not quite what he did. What he did was say, after they leave the EU, no matter what, the NHS sh should still get £350 million extra a week. He didn't necessarily say it had to came f come from the EU. He just said the NHS should get three hundred and fifty million per week more. So when they say he doesn't care about the poor, and I'm I keep being told by the Independent that the NHS is important for the poor, it seems like Jacob Rees-Mogg really wants to fund it. So I'm not taking your crap that he hates the poor. He is not in IQ terms stupid. He may again like Boris be one of those clever fools who seems to pepper British public life. The spiritual children of Enoch Powell with pure intellects in inverse proportion to their common sense. Enoch Powell's a genius. But he has more than enough mental capacity to appreciate that any allegation denied by the political ally who originally confirmed it must be false. In this context, he would repeat it only if he calculated that the personal benefit outweighs any contamination of his USP as a paradigm of civility and reasonableness in a rude and shouty world. I don't Oh, this is this is the most ridiculous article I've seen in a while. They just they just don't like Rees Mogg and they're trying to character assassinate him as the left usually do, and it's pathetic. This article is essentially just a hundred percent character assassination, but I think their strategy is summed up in one of their own sentences. There must always be room in political life for the willfully eccentric and even faux eccentric, but that room needs to be heavily padded. Now, I don't... What I gather from that, what they are trying to say is <laughs> there may be people who are outwardly against what we personally believe, but the space which they occupy has to be heavily controlled. I assume they mean by themselves. I just want to mention that I was talking to one of my friends today and he came up with one of the best paragraphs to describe what the left does. The left hold themselves due to the history of the West with such terminal moral high ground that they truly believe anything they produce is intrinsically correct and virtuous. By that command, anything which opposes it is inherently incorrect, morally wrong and inevitably open to interpretation of evil, i.e. Nazism. And I think he's absolutely right with that, and that's why they feel that they have a moral obligation to stop anyone who opposes them and use... That's why they call everyone Nazi, because then they have an excuse to shut down everything that they are doing, because Nazis are bad, which everyone wholeheartedly agrees with, except maybe they are right, because Hitler didn't go far enough for them. But finally, we'll get into why I actually really like Jacob Rees-Mogg. In this Guardian article, Jacob Rees-Mogg rails against gloomy Tory tactics in 2017 election. Fellow Conservative Anne Soubry says she will leave the party if he ever takes over as leader. I'm going to summarise this article really. Just basically, some Tory MPs will leave the party because Jacob Rees-Mogg, in their 
words, isn't a real conservative, even though I think he's the most conservative MP we've had for quite some time. And he also says he doesn't particularly want to be Prime Minister. He just doesn't think Theresa May is having a lot of fun doing the job. But what I really like is his brutal honesty, we'll call it. Rees Mogg said, we should have a more optimistic vision. What we had to say at the last election was so gloomy. It was that we ma will manage things better than the other side will, but it is going to be really nasty. We're going to make you sell your house if you're elderly, and if you're young, we're not going to talk to you at all. That doesn't work. It was a bad idea. Where I think Jeremy Corbyn is doing very well is in showing a vision for what he believes in, and I think Conservatives have to do that, and he's absolutely right. It is very important the Conservative Party can show that it's got followers from a variety of areas, the MP said. We broadly expect that retired fields marshals will be Conservative, but we need to show that young people, celebrities, people that can win I'm a Celebrity, Get Me Out of Here, also have a connection with the Conservative Party, that they will see why it's attractive. And then May's official spokesperson says she is <laughs> having fun doing her job as the Prime Minister, which I highly doubt. But this is this is why I like him. He... he he does he seems like an honest person and he seems like an honest person because he takes examples from real life and from opposite sides of the political spectrum such as jeremy corbyn says look they're doing better on this we need a good vision for the future which he did have a good vision for the future with brexit in the leave campaign he, he kept going on about the sovereignty argument and according to the independent doubled down on the 350 million pounds but he I think it's more he just said, look, the politicians promise something, the promise, the politicians should deliver. And he's, and he, he called the Treasury to make sure that they are going to pay the 350 million a year to the NHS, uh, a week, sorry, to the NHS. So I do think, I know it's really cliche to say, but I do think he is a man of the people, the, vo the voice of the people anyway, because... I can't really see anything there that he said that's wrong. I mean, young people, what did the Tories do for them last election? Absolutely nothing. And yeah, making retired people sell their house. It's just, you can't force people to do that. You just, I don't think he's saying appeal to everyone. I think he's saying at least appear to be positive as that will appear, appeal to people naturally. And I think Jacob Rees-Mogg does that anyway. I, uh, listening to him in debates and at Prime Minister's questions or in Parliament, whatever, he he just he has a point to make, he has his evidence, and he explains his point. That's all he does, and he's really good at it, and it's not what enough politicians do. A lot of politicians seem to just get really emotional about things, which maybe you do need emotion in some of your speeches, but, which, but Jacob Rees-Mogg does, but he's more willing to get in a debate about things and just try and character assassinate the other person. Because he, he didn't say Jeremy Corbyn won because he's a socialist. He said Jeremy Corbyn had a good vision for what he wanted. He didn't say it was a socialist vision. He didn't try and character assassinate him in any way. He just stated as little information as he needed to to get his point across, which I think is a very, very good thing on his part. I don't agree with all his opinions. He is anti-abortion. He, he is anti... He's anti-gay marriage, but that's because he's Catholic, and growing up Catholic, I kind of sympathise with that a bit, because it is how I used to think, but then I actually grew up and started thinking critically, we'll say. But to summarise, the left are really scared of Jacob Rees-Mogg. And in the meantime, I'm going to give you the speech that John MacDonald gave. And after, I'm going to put the text up that explains what he means by what he says. Thank you for listening. Election ...campaigns next year on a synchronised basis. I want to be in a situation where no Tory MP, no Tory MP, no coalition minister can travel anywhere in the country or show their face anywhere in public without being found by their own